to our second topic for the evening. President Muhammadu Buhari sent a list of 27 resident electoral commissioners and two ministers as well as three ambassadorial nominees to the Senate for screening. The Senate is set to commence screening of these presidential nominees tomorrow. Well, to analyze this forthcoming screening exercise is a legal practitioner, G.T. Oguni. Welcome to the program. Yes, my pleasure. Thanks Thank you very much invite. for Thanks joining for us on the program. Yes. Um, um, considering the fact that lately um, we've had a little drama play out at the National Assembly when it comes to names sent by the executive to the National Assembly for screening, what do we expect? Or do we expect a, similar, a smooth sail for the screenings tomorrow? You know, um, filibustering and rejection of nominations by the executive is a common uh, feature of any democratic um, dispensation. Uh, we've seen it play out in the United States of America, even under Obama. Um, of course, that power could be used uh, malevolently uh, by politicians just to stonewall uh, the executive. Uh, but um, our expectation is that this new nomination that uh, has been done and the screening that is going to take place after the grandstanding by the Senate initially uh, that they are going to reject uh, the nominations or that they will not screen, they will not do their job. We hope that this uh, screening uh, will be seamless. Of course, nobody is saying that they shouldn't do the job of screening. Uh, the Constitution assigns that role to the Senate and so uh, we're not expecting them to just pay power over and then just give uh, this, this take a bow and go thing. So um, nobody is saying that they should do that. Nobody is saying that they are a rubber stamp and that they just uh, a set of decorations that they are just there to allow every nomination that is um, made uh, to, to pass. No, nobody is saying that. But Nigerians actually and certainly detest using the legislative power to exert undue pressure on the executive, on the executive. with a view to blackmailing the executive and extracting undeserved concessions, particularly when the concessions being sought are extraneous to uh, the process of legislation oversight and even uh, the screening exercise itself, it has nothing to do with uh, the personalities that are put forward, but with a strenuous factor, oh, don't um, uh, try us again, oh, don't do this anymore, and all that. And so that's why Nigerians, rightly in my view, condemn that kind of grandstanding. Okay, and so we hope before, that this Before time we around, move forward to other issues, the issue yeah. of blackmail to extort some kind of concessions, would you say that is what... Uh, has obtained uh, from the Senate, between the uh, Senate and the executive arm of government? Certainly for me it was uh, a blackmail, but the blackmail has not worked thus far because it has worked. All those things that have been suggested uh, will have been accepted by the executive. Uh, the biggest blackmail, uh, and this looms large, though, is the inexplicable tardiness and lethargy in dealing with uh, the principal work of the legislature at the national level, which is the Appropriation Act. Now, we are, we are, we are, we are in May, and nothing has been done about that. So the question Nigerians are asking is that why the delay, uh, you know, before the police uh, search, which was tagged invasion of Senator Goje's house, and they are legging you know, uh, taking away of uh, the, the, the document, you know. Uh, so what could have happened? What, why didn't they do their job? Because they have been paid to do this job. And so what was the reason? And, and people are wondering, are there other things? Why is it so difficult to pass that principal legislation? Because this is what you know you are there for. You do year to year, and it's expected that there is will have been at least by now some institutional expertise in the handling, handling of, of budget. budget matters. But each year you see this tardiness. 
showing or suggesting the very least some backroom deals. Oh, they go to certain uh, ministries. You see, we're going to pass your budget, but look at these contracts. So we have interest in that. So it is, it is disconcerting. And so Nigeria don't want this kind of thing anymore. Do your job. And because every other person in the politics is doing his job, the teacher is doing his job, the medical doctor in the hospital is doing his job, the judge is doing his job. So you do your job. Okay, That's that, why you're there. That brings to fore something that happened recently. The House of Representatives warning the vice president from making comments, according to them, that are... Uh, appear as if the executive is trying to usurp the powers of the judiciary. You're a lawyer. The vice president is a senior advocate of Nigeria. What role does the judiciary have and what is the different role that the legislature has when it comes to confirmations, when it comes to confirmation? Does the, pre does the presidency, does the executive have the power to say if the, national, if the Senate does not confirm a particular nominee will go ahead and confirm him. No, 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 no. I don't think that the executive branch of government has the power to countermand uh, the National Assembly, in this case, the Senate. Um, you know, uh, that would not be right. That would be against the spirit of the Constitution and even the letters of the Constitution. So once a nomination is rejected, I don't expect the executive to insist. But in that particular occasion, uh, and we're referencing uh, the Magus uh, contentious nomination now. Uh, what happened was that the Senate did what it did. It was an act of chicanery. And that then forced thinkers, legal thinkers, to start thinking. And in the process of thinking, they realized that that was even an error. That Section 171 does not say that you should subject those kind of nominees to uh, senatorial confirmation. So if you don't stop this kind of chicanery, people will start digging and they start looking at the Constitution. And in my view, that interpretation is rock solid. Now, if the Senate or the National Assembly feels that the executive is wrong, they go to the Supreme Court. The uh, now, Section 232. Now, who goes to the Supreme Court? Either party, can, either party can go. The Senate either party can go. The, the executive has said that this is our position. You know what? They've taken a position. So for the National Assembly of the Senate that feels that there is a dispute already, they can go to the Supreme Court. The jurisdiction of the Supreme Court has been expanded since 1999, particular, in particular in relation to uh, any dispute that may emerge between the executive branch of government and the legislative branch. So uh, they can go to the Supreme Court and call for an interpretation of uh, that provision. And uh, before that interpretation, this is my own opinion. That opinion is sound. It was the insistence of the Senate on doing it its own way that made people to think. And now they can see the benefit of okay, thinking. Finally, let me ask you, another common practice is re-presenting. You know, the, the Senate kicks out a name. The presidency, the executive comes back and represents that same name, you know, and then another report comes up. What's supposed to be the proper way. I don't see anything concerning wrong in that. A bill is thrown out, is prepared and sent back. And the Senate considers that. So for me, representing a, a, a nominee is, is not is, it's, is normal. It's standard practice. Yeah. All right, thank you very much, Mr. Jiti Ogbuni, a legal practitioner, for joining us to shed some light on these issues. Well, that's our show for today. Many thanks for being part of it. I'm Emana Amawe. Bye-bye.